using sandboxing and containers to help increase our security and privacy. I'm going to start off with a real world example and one that where you may download something in Tor browser, you may open it and find out that someone has gathered your actual home IP address. So we're going to use that as the first example. But I do want to mention, if you want to support this and see these kind of videos continue into the future, you can always support over at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. These videos and articles are not well promoted by the algorithm. I've been working on this channel for three years, and I've lost quite a bit of hardware in the process over those three years. Video rendering is quite hard on the hardware. I also spend roughly five hours of editing for a 10 to 15 minute video. So it's pretty time consuming. So if you do want to support this kind of channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And one of the best ways to support, and it costs absolutely nothing, is to simply reshare these videos and repost them where others might find them useful. So I thank you for your support, and I want to thank all of those who have supported. And this video goes out to Greg, who was asking about security and privacy on Pop! OS. And so this video will apply to any Linux operating system, but we're going to start off with a real-world example and just show how something that looks innocent can actually exploit us in one way or another to gather our IP address. And we'll start off with a Python script that I wrote two years ago to work as a real-world example. Just as with security, the best way to learn about security is to learn how it's exploited. The same goes for privacy. The best way to learn about your privacy and how to protect it is learn how it's compromised. I believe that and that's what I try to do here. We're going to look at this Python script and what it does. If you ever get a document in email and you happen to think that Tor Browser protects everything you do online, you have to be careful what you download. If you download, for example, a simple document, it happens to be an HTML document, you know, you may think that that's fine because it's just a HTML document, it's offline, no big deal there. But let's consider what if the inside of that HTML document has something to load something remotely. And that's something that's very easy to apply and it's what the Python script works within the Apache log system to find out users who actually open the document. What this simple line does is it loads a remote image. If we were to utilize a server we controlled and we wanted to gather the IP address of Tor users, we could target them with this document and once they opened it locally on their hard drive, thinking that, you know, nothing is wrong, but it has a loading of a remote image which would show the direct connection of the user's home IP address in the Apache logs. And that's exactly what this Python script does. It actually goes through the Apache logs to find out the access IP addresses and times for that particular image, that crafted document, which is used to target users to take their IP address. That's what it does. So that's a real world example. How would we mitigate against this? Well, that's what we're covering today. We're covering isolation, sandboxing. We've covered this in previous videos, so you can check out my videos on that. We looked at the fire jail profiles back then. But today I wanted to do a more simple example to help out anyone who wants to get started easily. So there's different sandbox options out there. There's bubble wrap, which is a non-privileged sandbox option to run applications inside a restricted environment and what that does is it prevents it from doing anything it's not supposed to so if an application has access to the entire system there could be ways to exploit that system with fire jail it provides a nice easy way to manage this what this configuration wizard does is it allows you to further configure so say you know you want your default writer not to have access to the internet. Why should your document reader have access to the internet? In fact, in the past, people had loaded HTML into PDFs, which would then load remote content, and that would help de-anonymize Tor users. And so this is 
a, an example of the importance of isolating things. And there's various ways you can use this, restrict different applications. There are default profiles that have some good basic rules, but if you want to customize it, you can go through, build a custom security profile, restrict network access. You can even have it run with something like FireJail private, which would then create a private space wherein you have to be careful because if you're too restrictive, you won't be able to access files outside of that virtual environment. And so if you need to upload a file or something, for example, you wouldn't be able to do that with this particular option. But you can also do net equals none. So if you want to use FireJail with the command line, that's an option for you. Command line not required. Net equals none will restrict internet access from that application. So if you want the writer to open a PDF or document, but you're afraid it could somehow exploit you to connect to the internet and give away your IP address, you could use that net equals none. An easy way to open an application in FireJail, you can do Fire Tools, and you could then open that in so go to run here, and then it'll open it in FireJail. You can check and ensure that your application is running by doing FireJail list, and it'll show you if there are any FireJail processes open. As you can see, Lowrider is open with FireJail, restricting its access to the internet. I have another option to share with you today. Have you heard of bubble wrap? Now bubble wrap itself can be a little complicated for a lot of users. And so one great solution here is to use flat pack applications. Now flat pack applications are actually based on bubble wrap. You can download various flat pack applications. There's also a very helpful tool. It's called Flat Seal. So if you do get flat pack applications, I highly suggest getting Flat Seal. Now Flat Seal is going to give you a full access to different controls for that application and the restrictions, what it has access to, what it doesn't have access to. And that can be very helpful for our example that we used in the beginning. So you might want to have your default browser that opens that HTML document that happens to be something you really needed to see or somehow gained your interest. You want to restrict network access to it. Then you can simply open Flat Seal. All of your flat packs will be showing up in Flat Seal. You can restrict network access from whatever you want. And you can further restrict different access to different parts of the system. And so this is a really nice solution. Flat Seal. Something I suggest getting if you have flat pack. It's going to make different restrictions much easier because that is essentially what Flatpak is based on is bubble wrap itself. But anyone who's seen bubble wrap configuration knows it can be a little time consuming to do some of that stuff by hand without something like flat seal and flat packs. They are not the same thing, but it is based off of bubble wrap. You can check out how to install Flatpak really easily on flatpak.org slash setup and then just choose your operating system. And in fact, I believe Flatpak actually comes on Pop! OS. Use the advice here on your Pine phone, laptop, server, you know, whatever it is that you're running that runs Linux, this all applies. Further, with isolating, we can also utilize things like containers in our browser. And one other tip I do have I use different clients for different things, and this is just common sense for anyone who's familiar with privacy, to use different devices, use different applications, you know, it gives different data, it can leave a different fingerprint, can sort of create various identities in different applications, different devices. So if you have a Pine phone, you can utilize different SD cards with different operating systems to create an entirely new environment. And I have yet another tip for you. You can add a burner account to your Linux devices. You could do that so you could open certain things on it. Of course, you could have that particular burner account. It might be extremely restricted with sandboxing for everything, but not taking away your normal account's ability to use the system since certain restrictions can, as we noticed with FireJail private, some of these restrictions can make it harder to use your system. Something like with cubes, where cubes will have different cubes or virtual machines where you can't really 
access one from another. You have to, you know, mount the devices to each, attach it to each virtual machine as you use it. So that's one other option, user add, and you can do a restricted user without sudo privileges. And that could give you another little virtual environment since Linux is a true multi-user operating system. Personally, I use different devices. I have an old device that I'll use for some things without giving too much away of my own practices. Um, I have other devices for other things. And I could have one identity on one device. And disinformation, of course, is always helpful. So there's always ways you can use this. And without being able to put a name on data collection. The data is much less useful and that's one reason things like Tor Browser and you know things like I2P and other things are so you know helpful to fighting back against the data broker surveillance capitalism industry because if everyone's data is mixed up in mixed nets and onion routers well that data becomes pretty useless. Take a look at adding a new container. So if you have Firefox open or Liverwolf, highly recommend checking out Liverwolf. It's a more privacy and security focused fork of Firefox. So this is yet another isolation technique. You can add containers for different topics, for different interests. You could decide that you don't want to connect everything together. Some of this data, some of these search terms that you may use can be taken out of context by data brokers. And there's a lot of assumptions made with some of this collected data. You may not want those assumptions to be out of your hands. And so something like adding a new container, you could have, you know, travel. You might not want that all linked to other things. And I'm not saying containers are a solution to everything. They certainly aren't, but it at least will prevent the cookies from being attached to the other container cookies and can add a bit more isolation to your activities on your normal browsing. So something like that, color code it. Maybe we'll do that. We'll do that icon. And then it's as easy as right-clicking the plus, going down to travel. And we have a new, as you can see right here, travel container. And so here I may want to search up different things related to travel. And of course, it's a bit more isolated. Another thing I want to talk about is Privacy Badger. Privacy Badger is a nice browser add-on. It's from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. So it's trusted. It's something I recommend, especially new users who aren't familiar or don't want to go through all the time-consuming block lists that many other blockers use. If you want to just get started quickly and easily, check out Privacy Badger. Really easy. Automatically install it in the extensions in Firefox or Liberwolf. And what it does and what makes Privacy Badger unique is it detects tracking through the behavior of the trackers themselves. Let's take an example here. It actually detects it through the behavior. So instead of using, you know, normal block lists, it can actually detect the behavior of the trackers across different websites. And then you can choose if you want to, you know, block cookies, you want to allow them, so individually, but it automatically takes care of this all for you. And if it breaks a website, all you got to do is go to disable for this site. It's as easy as that. And it was created by someone who worked with the EFF. I do want to bring it up because I think it's really a great extension. So check out Privacy Badger. These are all things that you can do to further isolate. And this is a quick introduction to some of the different options for you. Once you've installed Flatpak for your operating system, we'll go and we can look up different things that we may want to isolate further. We can take a browser, for example. Maybe we want to open any HTML documents in a restricted from network, restricted from system browser, and it wouldn't be able to connect out. Utilizing things like flat seal. That's a really easy way to utilize isolation. So uh, check these things out. You can install various applications, simply look them up on flathub.org, and you can find all kinds of different applications and have full control over the isolating using the power of bubble wrap without going through anything complicated. Simple point and click interface, it's that easy. Even if you want to support this, buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. Check out the blog, it's free to read at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts. It's all organized, you can search titles, so that's what I have today, guys. Make sure to share this everywhere, and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.